Hey there everyone, I am Girish with the Construct Robotics Institute. In this video, I am going to quickly go over the procedure to install and run ROS2 Ion on Raspberry Pi with Ubuntu Server in under 12 minutes. So let's jump right in. This video has four major parts. The hardware requirements, the software requirements, the installation procedure for Ubuntu Server using two different methods, and the installation procedure for ROS2 Ion Irvini. As for the hardware requirements, you need either Raspberry Pi 4 or 5, an SD card to USB adapter, and an SD card with at least 32GB storage space. As for software requirements, you need to know that Ubuntu Server version 22.04 LTS is the recommended Ubuntu version compatible with ROS2 Ion Irvini. First, I will explain how you can install with the Raspberry Pi Imager. This is the recommended procedure for beginners. You can find the step-by-step -step tutorial for this method on the official Ubuntu website itself. Click on Download Ubuntu on the top, then click on Raspberry Pi on the left, and then click on the Server Installation Tutorial link on the right. Then simply follow the instructions from the tutorial pages. For this method, we will simply follow the steps mentioned in this tutorial link. As the next step, you will download the Raspberry Pi Imager program. First, you will update your system. And then you will install the Raspberry Pi Imager program from the Snap Store. Once the installation is complete, you should be able to launch the program from the Applications menu. Now you can start the Ubuntu Server installation process. As the first step, you will choose the Raspberry Pi model that you have. In my case, it is Raspberry Pi 4. And then you select the operating system. For Ubuntu Server, you need to click on Other Multipurpose OS, then choose Ubuntu, and then scroll over the list to select the Ubuntu Server 22.04.6 LTS 64-bit version because ROS2 Ion runs on Ubuntu version 22.04. As the next step, you select the storage device, which would be your SD card device name. Before you proceed, you need to configure internet connectivity to your Raspberry Pi so you can communicate with the Raspberry Pi through SSH. First, you need to set a username and password for your Raspberry Pi. Here, I am using Raspberry Pi as both username and password for the sake of this video. And then you need to set your Wi-Fi SSID and password. This should be the same network your computer is connected to. As the next step, you select your country, time zone and your keyboard layout format. Next, make sure your SSH service is enabled. Since it requires a password to connect, make sure you set up a username and password to connect to your Raspberry Pi. Lastly, in the Options tab, enable the Play Sound When Finished option so you are notified when the process completes. Revisit the other two tabs to confirm if all the settings are correct and then save the configuration. Once saved, select Yes for the next two steps to start the imaging process. It will ask you for your authentication, so provide your system password to start the imaging process. The imaging process takes about 21 minutes to complete, so get a beverage or take a short break. Once the imaging process is complete, transfer the SD card into your Raspberry Pi and then boot up your Raspberry Pi. Wait for 2-3 to three minutes before trying to connect using SSH. You need a network scanner application like Fink that I have shown here to identify the IP address of the Raspberry Pi on your local network. Perform a local network scan to find the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. Once you know the IP address of your Raspberry Pi, you can establish a connection using SSH, using the username and password that you set during the imaging process. Now I will show you another method on how to install Ubuntu Server with an image file using the Disk Image Writer program. First, you need to download the image file, so open the browser and search for Old Releases Ubuntu on your search engine and select the link that takes you to the index of Ubuntu releases. Once you are on the web page, click on Jammy Jellyfish, the version name for Ubuntu 22.04. The release packages are listed chronologically in ascending order of release. Scroll to the bottom to find the most recent release of Ubuntu Server 22.04 for Raspberry Pi 64-bit version. You can find both desktop version as well as the server version, so make sure you download the proper image. It should be named as Ubuntu Server AMD64 Raspi. You need to download the file with the img.xz extension which is about 1 GB in size. Start downloading that file. And wait for the download to finish. Make sure your file has downloaded properly by verifying the file name and its size. Now go to the downloaded location and right click on the file. Select open with disk image writer. Then select your SD card drive as the destination and then start restoring. 
It should prompt you for your system password. Once you authenticate, the imaging will start immediately. The imaging process takes about 12 to 15 minutes. So take a short break or make yourself some beverage. Just wait for the process to complete. Once the imaging is complete, you should see three partitions on your SD card. System boot, writable and some free space. Here is the most important step. Once the imaging is complete, transfer the SD card onto the Raspberry Pi and boot it up. Wait for about 5 minutes for the system to complete initialization steps. Then turn off the Raspberry Pi and transfer the SD card back again to your computer. Once you have mounted the SD card back on your computer, open the system boot partition and create a file named SSH with root privileges. Also provide full permissions to that file using chmod. Next, go inside the writable partition. Locate the etc folder and get inside. Locate a folder named netplan and go inside this folder. You should find a file named 50cloudinit.yaml. You need to add your Wi-Fi credentials into this file to be able to connect to the Raspberry Pi using SSH. Make sure that you are connecting to your Raspberry Pi through the same local network on which you have your computer connected. You can pause the video here to copy the YAML code to your file when you are setting this up by yourself. To save the file, you need root privilege. So you need to type in your system password to save the file. Once saved, open it again to verify if the changes have persisted. Finally, you can unmount and eject your SD card from your computer and put it back into your Raspberry Pi and boot it up. As a next step, you can connect to your Raspberry Pi using SSH. Get your Raspberry Pi's IP address using a network scanning application and then establish a connection to your Raspberry Pi using SSH. If you get a warning saying someone is trying to hack you, you can disregard this message. This can happen if your Raspberry Pi was registered as a different device on your network list. The error basically says there is a new unidentified device on the same IP address. Just copy and paste the suggested command in your terminal to fix the issue. You can then make an SSH connection to your Raspberry Pi in the usual way. When you connect for the first time, the username and password are both lowercase Ubuntu. You will be prompted to change your password after your first login. So type in a new password and save it. You will get disconnected immediately. Connect to the Raspberry Pi again using the same SSH command but now with your new password. In my case, I have set it to Raspberry Pi. You can set it to whatever you like. Once connected, you can explore around on the Raspberry Pi. As the last part of this video, you will see how to install ROS2i and Irvini on the Ubuntu server that you just installed. Open your browser and load the ROS2i and installation guide webpage. As indicated earlier, you should have Ubuntu 22.04 installed on your system onto which you will install ROS2i and. In this case, Ubuntu server running on a Raspberry Pi. The installation will be done using deb packages, which is the recommended method. Before you install, make sure you have set up two things the ROS2IN installation website and a terminal with an active SSH connection to your Raspberry Pi. Before actually installing the ROS2IN framework, you need to configure your system and install some prerequisite packages. Just follow through this part of the video and replicate the same processes onto your Raspberry Pi setup. As the next step, you will install ROS2IN Irvini. You have two options to choose from, the desktop version and the barebones version. The desktop version comes with GUI applications, whereas the barebones version comes without any GUI applications. For our purpose, we will install the barebones version, since we have installed the Ubuntu server version and not the desktop version. Just copy and paste the commands to install the barebones version of ROS2IN Irvini. The installation process takes about 5 minutes. Now the main installation of ROS2IN is complete. You may install RMW implementation if required, but I will not be showing this step in this video. Now it is time to test your ROS2IN installation. Simply start by sourcing your ROS2 installation and issuing a simple ROS2 command, ROS2 topic list. You should immediately see parameter events and ROS out listed as ROS2 topics. This confirms that ROS2 has been installed successfully on your Raspberry Pi system. You can also check if you have a directory called iron located inside your slash etc slash ROS directory. You may choose to install ROS1 bridge if you need. If you choose to uninstall ROS2ION in the future, simply follow the instructions at the bottom of this web page. Alright, we are now done with the ROS2ION installation. One last thing, make sure to check out our website theconstruct.ai. We have a lot of courses on robotics and ROS that will help you get into a robotics career. We also have a special robotics masterclass program that you can join to learn everything about ROS and robotics to land a job as robotics engineer in just under 12 months. Just visit roboticsdeveloper.ai to know more. Alright everyone, 
That is all for this video. Hope you all enjoyed. Don't forget to check our website. Thanks for watching. Bye.